Hey guys, welcome back to Generation Meme, the podcast where we try to make sense of making ends meet every day. We've been on a bit of a hiatus since our last episode, a reasonable consequence of a lot of running around and getting busy after our national lockdown was lifted at the end of June. We'll get into the details of what we've been up to a bit later. But first things first, this episode, we're happy to introduce you to our new co-host, Mime and potsterer Aisha Adam on her podcast debut. Hi guys, so excited to be here and it's time to amp up some serious female energy in this podcast. So Aisha, tell us a little bit more about yourself, why you're here. Hmm, I start, yeah? This is always a very difficult question for me. How do you best describe yourself? Padahal lagi senang I reflect berdasarkan segala kegagalan I sepanjang tempoh tu lah eh. Untuk konteks, I quit my job one and a half years ago untuk berhijrah ke Mexico. So, saya bekerja di sana. So, apabila berlaku je pandemik ni, kami semua dihantar pulang balik ke Malaysia. Suami so, saya masih bekerja mengikut waktu Mexico dari hari pertama kami sampai di Mexico, eh, di Malaysia, sorry. Maksudnya, siang dia tidur, malam dia kerja. So, boleh bayangkan tak betapa buntunya I duduk dekat rumah berdua dengan suami yang tidur bila I berjaga dan berjaga bila I tidur. I tak tahu nak buat apa. I don't have a job, I don't have kids or family members untuk mengisi masa lapang I. I baca buku tapi banyak manalah you boleh baca buku sampai you, nak, you sampai you bosan. Nak dijadikan cerita rumah yang kita orang duduk tu wifi pun tak ada. So, yeah, I tengok Netflix pun pakai data hotlink, okay? I sign up for three online courses, tapi I complete dua je. I jumpa tripod my husband, I modify benda Allah tu, kononnya nak jadi influencer. Hampir, I tengok my own footage pun I rasa nak baling telefon, okay? I updated my CV, uh, LinkedIn, mula apply untuk cari kerja. No one called. Kemudian I join uh, Magic punya bootcamp for social entrepreneurs. Bila habis je bootcamp tu, I punya tenaga dan semangat juga habis ya. So, I tak ada dah pursue I punya idea untuk social enterprise tu. Kemudian, I cuba nak jadi penulis. Update update blog I dua kali saja. I join a 30-day home yoga with Adrian. Hari ke-29, aku quit. Nak jadi urban farmer. Oh, okay, tuai sekali je you all, lepas tu tanam mati, tanam mati sahaja. Uh, dan uh, ya, yeah, itulah, itulah yang I lalui sepanjang tempo PKP tu, segala kegagalan I, well documented. Uh, but things started to change bila uh, PKP dilonggarkan, P- apa? PKP bersyarat kan. Uh, kemudian makin lama makin kurang dia punya, uh, how do you say, kawalan pergerakan. So dah startlah boleh mengopi dengan kawan-kawan. And then only I I started to make sense of uh, all my experiences throughout that time. Budak ada pengajaran-pengajaran yang COVID bawa kepada kita. Dan di situlah I jumpa dengan salah seorang genuine kita iaitu Luffy. Ya, kita ah cakap kat Luffy. Luffy, uh, do you need any help dekat Jenmi? Anything? Buat kopi pun I sanggup. Uh, and yeah, that's how I ended up here. But Honestly speaking, throughout PKP tu, berkali-kali I rasa I'm a massive failure. I even resented my husband because he had a job and I di- I didn't have a job. I resented everyone yang macam so productive, doing yoga, doing all these things. I, I hated them at that time because I felt like my life did, uh, didn't have a purpose and they did and it's unfair. But yeah, like I think we had to go through all that before we make sense of everything and come back up again. So that's how I would summarize my PKP experience. One day at a time. That's been my mantra. When all this kicked into action back in March, it sort of felt like an opportunity to initiate some kind of reset in response to the crisis. It felt like, well, we're all in this together and we're all some part of some big global event that could potentially shape the next phase of our lives and we would need to do this together. So when we were all released back into the wild, we kept ourselves busy, starting new projects, socializing, schmoozing as much as we could, making up for lost time perhaps. 
what has helped me to keep my head above water was to reframe a lot of life in terms of seasons. These demarcations of time, which have taken on their own absurdities and patterns, whether they be astrological seasons, the moons and the months, or these similarly absurd economic seasons of quarters, of which the end of September portends the end of Q3, practically three-fourths of the year completed. I've found some peace in the essential truth that seasons change and that life goes on. And I can see now with some hindsight at least that a lot of the energy spent in the past couple of months post lockdown was a response to this unshakable uncertainty that is still with us as the year rolls by. The world is different now as our friendships and our relationship to the future. Okay, so projek pertama saya semenjak saya join Gen Yim adalah mencari orang-orang muda atau kita selalu kata millennials and Gen Zs and ask them this one question. How are you making ends meet every day? Basically, saya nak tahu cabaran yang diorang hadapi dan macam mana diorang cope dengan MCO atau PKP ni. In a way, MCO tu family time lah. Tiga bulan hmm. tu, saya memang cari kerja tiga, empat kali je macam tu. Tapi, um, the first three months, until before MCO 18 March tu mm-hmm. memang tak tak banyak yang panggil pun I rasa I dapat satu je interview mm-hmm. four uh, uh, three calls interview mm-hmm. dia orang interview je tapi end up tak dapat pun so mm-hmm. macam susah sangat lah even my friend yang semua dah berhenti, yang kena buang tu pun memang semua sampai sekarang tak tak kerja lagi uh, I don't really have like big expectations on the financial side of stuff so What I have right now is sufficient for the way I live. So it's like I'm not stressed monetary wise because I had more before. I just have enough now. I still don't have my own brand of longboards, mm-hmm. but we kind of stopped selling because we didn't really make much money out of it. So we turned it into this community kind of thing last session. We didn't have cases in the resort. Oh Basically, yeah. We were quite safe. Oh, that's good. So we totally enjoyed until like uh, I got on the last repatriation to come back to Malaysia. Oh. And uh, first month was okay because I got to see my family, my friends. Even though like this is like already um, the MCO phase two, I think. Yeah. So people were allowed to go out. Mm, mm. So I was really enjoying like the food here. So I wasn't really affected. Up to recently, I start to feel like okay, I need a job because um, so because of my I'm a musician, I'm a DJ, an audio engineer. So it all comes to entertainment. So as we know, in this pandemic, there is no entertainment allowed yeah. and uh, no music jobs, nothing. And uh, so now what I do is just keep myself busy. I go to yoga classes with my friends. I skate most of the time, maybe two or three times in a week. We even go to big gardens to just, you know, to keep myself occupied rather than just staying home and thinking, oh, what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next week. I sangat terkesan dengan cerita Yashka tadi sebenarnya. What she went through reminds me so much of my own repatriation journey. 16 March tu, uh, masa dia announce uh, akan ada lockdown, I masa tu dekat di Pacha Hall KLIA. So, uh, bila dia announce uh, Malaysia akan lockdown 18 hari bulan March, I macam, fuh nasib baik, I sempat balik Mexico balik. Uh, orang pun dah text lah, oh you live just in the nick of time. Apa semua, time tu cakap macam tu lah. Uh, tapi, uh, by the time I sampai dekat KLIA malam tu pun, dah memang start lengang lah. Jalan lengang, KLIA lengang. And then, I naik KLIA, KLM 14 jam uh, sampai Skipo Airport. So, throughout 14 jam tu, memang I pakai mask lah. Pakai mask and sanitize my hand regularly. Bila sampai dekat Skipo tu, memang pagi buta lah. So, I thought macam, okay, memang tak ramai orang. Tapi, you tengok flights yang ada dekat, uh, what do you call that? Uh? Tar- tarmac eh. Pun tak banyak. So, okay lah. I pun dah 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 realise at that time, okay, banyak flights yang dah cancel. Even kat KLIA pun. 
So, I pun carilah corner yang paling tak ada orang untuk I duduk. I cakap, okay, I'm gonna, this is going to be my kubu. I'm gonna sit here, jauh daripada orang lain for 7 to 8 hours of my transit time. Pukul 7 pagi tu, I dah macam, okay, sekejap lagi akan ada breakfast kot. Akan ada cafe atau restoran tu buka kot. Pukul 8. Pukul 8 pagi, I jalan-jalan lah. Macam, kenapa counter-counter breakfast semuanya kosong? I keluar. Hmm, is it too early for any of these cafes to open? Lepas tu, I rasa nak dekat pukul 9 kot. I dah macam, eh, takkanlah. I tak, tak makan langsung kan? I tanyalah airport staff, where can I get food? Saya kata, sorry, food counter semua tutup. Cafe semua tutup. Restaurant semua tutup. Saya dah macam, eh, Netherlands dah start lockdown ke? Atau I pun google lah, google uh, lockdown, cafes, Netherlands. True enough, at that time, diorang dah start closing down restaurants and cafes. Airport staff tu cakap, kalau you nak makan, adalah convenience stores. You can get lah croissant and snacks. So, I pun pergilah convenience store paling dekat. Dia ada serve croissants, memang plain croissants and other snacks lah, all the chocolate bars. Breakfast, breakfast bar semua ada. So, I, I beli satu uh, cup a cup of coffee and then croissant and then a packet of truck waffle. So, I bertahan lah dengan dengan I punya supply makanan yang ada tu for 7 to 8 hours. And then, I naik flight pergi Mexico. Okay. Sampai dekat Mexico. Sampai dekat Mexico, masih tak ada social distancing lagi eh dekat, dekat Mexico time tu sebab uh, katanya lah, masa tu tak banyak case lagi at that uh, part of the world. Lepas tu, I pun macam, okay, go through immigration apa semua macam biasa. Keluar, I dah rasa semacam bila I tak nampak my husband dekat airport, dekat arrival hall. And then, you dah start rasa macam, okay, ada sesuatu berlaku ni. Orang yang uh, ditugaskan untuk ambil air daripada airport tu, datang. Uh, dia kata, Mr. Irving cannot uh, pick you up today. I dah macam berdua kau dah lah. lah. Kata, I nak, nak, nak telefon dia. Tapi yelah, masa tu I balik Malaysia, nak dekat dua bulan juga untuk Chinese New Year. So, I tak ada line lah, I punya phone. I dah macam, ish, gegam dah ni. Apa, apa jadi ni, I tak boleh lah. Uh, blur-blur kat situ kan. And then my husband call, uh, dia cakap, Okay, a lot of things happen uh, waktu you dekat dalam kapal terbang tu. Uh, so, the company has decided to send everyone home. You are on the list who will have to fly back tomorrow. Imagine, I dah uh, 30 jam naik dua flight merentas separuh dunia, berlapar dekat, dekat ski pole tu. Apa perasaan saya masa tu? Lepas tu, saya uh, Mahazman cakap lagi, uh, you kena quarantine dekat hotel uh, while waiting for your flight tomorrow. Lepas tu, saya pun macam nak memberontak lah kan. Yelah, quarantine satu hari je. Tapi esok saya naik flight balik, then orang lain akan expose kepada saya. But there's no time to argue at that time. So, Mahazman cakap, okay, uh, you nak saya balik dengan you tak? Wes, isteri mana tak yang tak, tak jumpa husband dia for a, a month or so, tak nak husband dia balik dengan dia kan? So, of course, I insisted that dia kena dapatkan tiket untuk balik dengan I. Uh, cut story short, uh, dia berjaya dapat tiket balik uh, Malaysia dengan I. So, the next day tu, kita nak fly balik ke Mexico tu dengan beberapa orang, beberapa keluarga lah yang kena balik dengan kita orang juga. Dari Mexico kita pergi ke Tokyo. Bila sampai Tokyo tu, again, lengang semua. Padahal Tokyo pun adalah satu airport yang sangat sibuk. Bila sampai KL tu, okay, you imagine, I dekat KLIA hari Isnin, I dekat uh, KLIA, hari Sabtu I dah ke KLIA balik. Hari Isnin memang lengang, tapi ramai orang. I mean, maksud I ada orang. Tapi bila hari Sabtu tu sampai, kosong. Memang kosong. Ni I tengah cerita dengan you pun, I masih meremang lagi terbayangkan betapa uh, bezanya KLIA waktu tu. Lepas tu, dah start ada saringan, kemudian ada dokumen-dokumen yang kita kena isi. Bila you keluar dekat arrival hall tu, ada transport untuk hantar ke mana-mana saja tempat yang you kena quarantine. 
And get this eh, masa kita orang fly tu ada family, tak ada tempat lagi untuk pergi kuarantin. Uh, masa tu tak ada lagi pusat kuarantin yang disediakan oleh kerajaan lah. Naik kereta, pergi rumah my parents. Uh, my parents dah pack barang-barang untuk kita orang berkuarantin selama dua minggu. Sebab kita kuarantin uh, dekat uh, our house yang kita dah tinggalkan uh, sebab kita pindah ke Mexico kosong. Bila sampai dekat rumah my mom tu, I dah ada kunci siap-siap, I just buka kereta, barang dah penuh dalam tu. And then, I remember my parents were trying to datang dekat kita nak, nak tengok anak, siapa tak nak tengok anak kan? Betul, I, I terpaksa cakap kat parents, I jangan datang dekat, jangan datang dekat, duduk dalam rumah. Because I datang, kita tak tahu kan apa kita bawa, siapa yang expose, siapa tak expose. And then tu lah, uh, just say goodbye over the gate and then we drove to our house, our empty house and that's when our quarantine started. So what else is new? As Aisha mentioned, we've introduced new Genbeam segments and content which you can watch on our social media platforms. We figured that Genbeam isn't about us or experts, but about all of us and the things that we are doing to pull ourselves through this unsettling period. So you want to hear from everyone, people who do different things and come from different places and your experiences and thoughts. So don't be alarmed to see Aisha knocking on your door with a mobile video recording rig. Besides that, we're also working with people and organizations to create new and interesting content that speaks to the spirit of the times. Yes, we recently released Malaysia Cipta Kerja where we collaborated with Refsa to talk about job creation policies to help people get through the pandemic-induced recession. And coming very soon is Muka Malaysia, an exploration of the diverse and multiple beliefs, cultures and identities that we can find in this country. We are very excited about all of these and we think you love them too. So before we end this meeting, I have one question in mind. Apa satu benda yang you rasa sangat penting waktu lockdown tu? Hmm. Okay, well, to be completely honest, I don't really remember half the things that I did during Zido. Yeah. But I think the two things which kind of stand out for me now is it was cooking and it was writing. So so I think for me cooking was a process and a family thing for me. So, you know, it was about buying groceries. It was about meal planning. It was about coming together around the table. So I think that became the centerpiece of how I organized my time during that very really weird space that we were all in. So mm. I would cook. I remember I bought a five kilo bag of chickpeas so I could keep cooking um, Alison Roman's famous uh, spiced chickpea stew which I probably cooked like three, four times and then all before realizing that it was literally uh, chickpea masak lemak. Mm. So, um, so cooking was fine, you know. So, you know, my dad started to bake. I started to just cook all sorts of things. And I think that writing, on the other hand, helped me to kind of take a step back and organize my thoughts around what was happening. You know, obviously we were doing all sorts of other things as well, like, you know, whether it was yoga, whether it was trying to catch up with friends or um, trying to read, you know, like I was quite surprised that I didn't sort of fall into some kind of depressive mood or something, you know. So I think I think that kind of the act, the process of actually providing and cooking and doing things in a sort of linear process or something, just making things. Actually, so that's really what it was. It was just making things that kept me centered. Hmm, I rasa jawapan you deep sangat. Sebab jawapan I bodoh je. I rasa benda yang I realise sangat essential mm-hmm. adalah katil. Okay. Katil. I dua bulan tidur atas lantai. I thought all the while macam, oh, okay, I can sleep anywhere, kan? Mm-hmm. Dua bulan MCO tidur atas lantai kau rasa. So, yes, I realise how important katil is. That's all for this episode of Jamim. Drop us your comments, thoughts and feedback wherever you get your journey. While you're at it, share and let people know about how you're making ends meet every day. Thank you for listening and until next time, breathe